Good morning, folks. We've got earthquake news, weather, climate, deep space, cosmology, and of course the sun. You're staring at a failed active region. These bright fields have no sunspots beneath them. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star. You'd have to go back to 2009 to find this many days in a year without sunspots. All appears calm as dark coronal holes are beginning to turn through, and without the sunspots there are no solar flares, and the solar wind is calming as well. Speed beginning to draw back after failing to get too intense in the first place. But that central coronal hole, which is the progenitor of the earthquake watch, has its solar wind still a few days from hitting our planet. But with our magnetic connection to it now, it's complemented by Mercury's solar conjunction today, little guy between Earth and Sun. We've seen a couple noteworthy seismic events over the last day, even if they haven't gotten too large, including the largest aftershock yet at Rinjani. Eyes on that volcano for more, but hope that she stays asleep. Meanwhile, both of these rumbles in Australia are more than your average tremor there, and if we thought the North Pole got involved over the weekend, she shifted the seismicity north of the 86th parallel, which is very north. Veteran observers know we are waiting for the solar polar field peak to denote the primary earthquake risk time of the entire season. We are ramping up higher and higher and have exceeded last year's positive peaks for both the northern polar fields and the total solar fields to which Earth is exposed, trending higher. Let's come over to the satellites and what you want to see is the southern half of the country taking it worse. That is going to be the case again tonight as well as Hurricane John tosses moisture over the Mexican mountains to meet a flow out of the Gulf of Mexico. Dropped one tornado yesterday in the morning hours in Colorado. Spot of good news is Shanshan weakening the moment it got close enough to smell Fukushima, Japan coast tearing it apart. We've got the new July U.S. climate update for the 24th straight month. Maximum temperatures look about spread an anomaly while it's the nighttime lows failing to get down as cold. The cold isn't as cold in general, replacing the actual heat to allow them to call it a hot month. Just remember, it's the nighttime temps driving it. Let's go way, way out to the ESO's capture of a cluster of galaxies in relatively close proximity, relative to the vastness of the cosmos. And as we zoom in, I want your eyes to be looking for wispy connections between the prime players. Two very bright and light-colored spiral galaxies and the faded return between them and around them is the aftermath of their latest flyby and collision, parts of each torn away and mashed together. Lastly, folks, maybe some of you recall Dr. Magosh shredding the dark matter concept on our interview with him some months ago. Nice to check in and see how his mind is wrapping around the most current topics in the field. Folks, we've got community favorites and a solar climate forcing legend on deck, as well as Electric Universe, Earthquake Prediction, the Magnetic Reversal, and more at OTF 2019. Come out and see us in the desert for the Awake event of the year. Tickets at otf.cells.com where you can also pre-order our layman's textbook, Weatherman's Guide to the Sun. 30% off when you pre-order, which might be a record for brand new educational text. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. We greatly appreciate your support and we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.05 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.